Before R. Kelly's case became federal, I made it very obvious to a lot of people that I believe we were witnessing a lot of corruption right in our face. Starting with Kim Fox and her connection with Michael Avenatti, the extortionist. So let me get this right. We're going to let this man come out here and tell us that Robert Kelly paid off his witnesses in his first trial, that he bought his first trial to be exact. Meanwhile, he gets convicted of extortion and nobody says nothing about how he could have conspired with these con artists, conspired with this prosecutor, and manufactured this whole case using the media and public outcry. But we'll get to that later because they also tried to run game by telling us to mute R. Kelly. <laughs> now it's funny because Robert Kelly's true supporters and fans have heard him over the years talk about his janky ass management and these people abusing his trust. So when individuals in the industry who know certain facts come out and distort these facts and remove certain characters from accountability and people come out and voice the obvious, it should be very clear why individuals such as myself can use a talking point such as Robert Kelly and the injustice to shine light on the overall injustice. And while this Black Lives Matter propaganda is being funded by the people who are obviously keeping you distracted, the irony about here screaming Black Lives Matter while proving the point and why black lives don't, and watching them take down the king of R&B because all these black lives don't even know their nationality. It says a lot when the innocent project picks and chooses who they want to represent who the NAACP picks and chooses who's going to be on their board and misrepresent. When these religious leaders make you feel the Christian thing to do is just to forgive and keep janky-ass people around you, this is the cycle we see in the black community. Now, it didn't take a genius to realize that this is a shakedown and has been from... 20, 30 years ago, and all these people coming out who felt like Robert Kelly was so guilty should have been equally attentive to all these conspirators in these crimes. But instead, people were coming out playing victim. People were coming out conspiring with prosecutors and the janky-ass attorneys who discovered not one, not two, but three copies of clips they claim to be of an alleged minor. Now, if you had read the indictments, you would have realized that all they did was restructure those charges from his 2008 trial and added these three other alleged victims. So when it comes to what I said long time ago, that I believe they were using these clout chasers to refabricate, rehatch all those charges from his 2008 trial and pile on more. Oh, but the icing on the cake, that same attorney then takes his so-called evidence to CNN, lets them view it. The anchors get on live TV talking about they viewed it and they can't confirm the age of this girl, but everybody who's viewed it and watched it, they're not complicit to obviously viewing child pornography and b not reporting this crime so common sense tells me they obviously cannot prove it is a minor on said tape so when all these people are activated to come out here and keep implicating telling their stories and people are implying this girl is testifying it leads you to question everything with that being said, when you watch the character of all these individuals coming out and how they maneuvered, how they aligned themselves with certain individuals, and we then seen them begin to focus on Robert Kelly's supporters, align themselves with these accusers, present these documentaries, and overlook all the obvious facts and red flags with these individuals and the actions they're putting out on public platforms, getting away from the people 
that should obviously be the focus of this RICO enterprise if it did exist, instead of relying on all these people who inserted themselves, attached themselves to his fan base, and helped create the narratives using individuals who have never publicly confirmed allegations using con artists who clearly are not credible. Oh, but don't believe me. Let's listen to this other janky-ass attorney. Shout out to Malicious Conspiracy. We're going to have to keep replaying this clip of these janky-ass politicians, prosecutors, and attorneys and their bullshit. Oh, so y'all just gonna lie to the public talking about this man preying on underage girls, paint him as this predator while y'all try to construct this narrative so y'all can get him criminally charged, but y'all for the NAACP. <laughs> So the black community said he's guilty of something. So we're okay with these people violating his rights and reconstructing and trying to help this family. Man, get the fuck out of here. Before Robert Kelly's case became federal, it's a lot of people that should have been investigated. And with that being said, many of the cases presided by by the likes of Kim Fox should be vacated. It's crazy these people will attach to individuals who have their own skeletons in their closet but want to hide behind all these allegations and this black cloud around this individual and use sketchy people to facilitate these alleged actions via social media and no one points out the fact that the same way they're using these girls to say nobody cares about them, they would lock up trying to imitate these lifestyles and unrealistic goals that are set out there through the entertainment industry. The hypocrisy and selective outcry is what did it for me, and how these people will even use individuals who were discredited in his first trial individuals who blatantly take on other people's stories and take down an icon while guess who's going to profit in the end yet throughout this whole ordeal i have not been able to understand the logic of saying mute art kelly going to the corporation that has been behind his career from beginning to end and telling them to drop him while they continue to collect revenue and all these other artists sit back and watch wondering who's next so back to Kim Fox and how she allowed this docu-series created by all these people becoming allies, creating these fictional narratives and swaying what they should do legally and criminally to proceed with an investigation and instead creating public outcry in order to trump up charges against a person they say must have done something. And everybody conveniently forgets how we're seeing history repeat itself over and over. And though the scenarios may be different, the end game, the end result is all the same. 
the mere fact that an allegation of this alleged marriage which happened in Chicago being mentioned in New York should shed light to the corruption that should have been pointed out from jump. But nobody likes to point out the facts. People only want to be misguided with the allegations and the rumors. They won't demand that these county clerks and all these political figures and other people in position be investigated. No, no, no. They want to come out here disguised in these shell companies and play with your emotions. They won't demand these corporations that have been complicit to alleged abuse be held accountable. No, no, no. They'll just let them create shell companies to further manipulate these artists, embezzle money, and obviously collect royalties while they get rid of the artists. Now call me a conspiracy theorist all you want, but after so many artists come out saying the same exact things, after you go back after all this footage and see R. Kelly complaining of the same things, you have to pay attention to the obvious things you've seen play out in your face. I, you that's really that. what it is. I, I, I have not gotten right no money. That's right. I haven't gotten fucking right. paid. I did this for my fucking fans. Can't hit 30 fucking hours. Right. Ran out of gas, but still made it here on time. Right. And they tell me I ain't got my money. Right. Well, I can't do that. I done just, I've been fucked before too many times right. in the past. I got to make example out of these characters, man. You got my shit? Yeah. God damn, right. man. I got it. So we can do it when you leave. Yeah, but y'all try to set up a show, another show, come to Arizona to make this shit up to my fans. I'm gonna make this shit up to my fans for the for the promoters fucking up today. They right. didn't give me my money. What am I gonna do? Right. I didn't get paid. Now, did. now he everything that all the expenses gotta come out of his pocket and he ain't get a dime. dime. Exactly. Man. I tell him. Let's go. Twenty six people here. Absolutely. Twenty six yeah. people here to make this show happen. Yep, I got you. Kelly, by now, you should know that you should come see me. You know who I am. You know who you have at your house. My daughter, Jocelyn Savage. My name is Tim Savage. <laughs> Listen, bro, the, the call, look, bro, the man dealt with R. Kelly in my living room, bro. The man dealt with R. Kelly in my kitchen. We dealt with Doug Russell in my kitchen, bro. Well, who's here talking? I'm just advising to listen. I'm like, yeah, like the one guy. Uh, they don't know. The, the one guy. Uh, uh,
know what they're going to cost, and we have to raise money for them. The platform that I'm putting them out on, and they still have this money coming in, and they want to show the money being donated to this firm to represent this case. And it has to be done a strategic way. We need to! Now, I made it very clear that I believe people were aligning themselves to purposely put certain messages out here. And of course, my platform was not going to be the source of the bullshit. So when I brought it to your attention from my perspective and continuously saw all these individuals intentionally trying to distort the overall message that I brought to you, it became very obvious why I tell you the setup is real and all these people did this right in your face. The question is, what are people going to do about it? Everybody wants to talk about accountability. Well, who's next besides Robert Kelly? Interested in my Valentine's Day raffle? All you got to do is send $1 to Prima Donna Pastries for your chance to win a personalized gift box from me to you. All you got to do is send that $1 and when you get a reply of the dollar emoji, all you got to do is email me your address and your box is on the way. And guess what? Just to make this fair, I'm going to keep those that don't get a reply in the raffle up until Valentine's Day to give them the opportunity to win as well. Of course, as a new business, I'd like to do more, but it's a thought that counts, right?